Back in 2010, my wife and I had our first child. He's named after me, his name's Cameron. And he was a sweet, beautiful boy with white curly hair. And I do not think I ever took him out in public without somebody talking about how beautiful his hair was and how God wasted it on a boy. On November the 10th, 2013, we were playing Legos on a normal Sunday afternoon and my perfectly healthy child lost his Lego. And so he asked, can we ask Jesus to help me find my Lego? And so we prayed and we found the Lego and Cameron said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And he then from there went into this line of spiritual questions that kind of came out of nowhere. He said, you know, Daddy, can we go see Jesus today? I said, well, Cam, you know, Jesus is here with us and you can't see him, but Jesus is with us right now. And he said, well, why can't we just go get in the car and, and go find Jesus? And I told him, you know, Cameron, you'll get to see Jesus when you go to heaven one day. Um, but for now, we just have to trust that he's with us even though we can't see him. And he said to me, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus died for my sins. Little did I know that that is the last conversation I would really ever have with him. That night, I went on a camp out with some boys in my youth group. The next morning at 7.30, I noticed that I had three missed calls from my wife in the span of a minute. And uh, she finally reached me on the fourth call. She said, you need to get to the hospital immediately. And I said, well, what, what's wrong? And she said, I cannot tell you. And I said, Lauren, I, I cannot drive you know, 45 minutes not knowing why I'm driving to the children's hospital. And just out of nowhere, she said, Cameron is dead. I was just in utter shock. My child was perfectly healthy. I had played with him the day before. And here, my wife is telling me that my child has mysteriously died in his sleep. One of the biggest questions and fears that a person has uh, when they first encounter tragedy is, you know, am I ever gonna be the same again? Like, am I ever, is my life ruined? Because I think when my son died, I think I really had this sense and this fear at times that I'm going to be miserable for the rest of my life. It's helpful to have realistic expectations that you're never, never going to completely heal. You know, for my wife and I, it's still a very real and present um, part of our emotional undercurrent. Whether it's his absence at a birthday party or on holidays or when we do a family picture, it's something that just pokes at that wound in your heart um, that, that really will be there for the rest of our lives. I feel like every time I cry, no matter what it's about, I feel like in a lot of ways, I'm still always crying for Cameron. Seeking the Lord and seeking His Word, it's still something that I continue to do and have to do uh, to continue to move forward. You know, in particular, I have found that thinking about heaven, you know, something that is on my mind all the time, because that's where my child now lives. And so, and it's also too, it's the point where I know that I'm gonna be fully healed, and it's the point where I'm gonna be reunited with Cameron. I wanna make clear that I have not been spared of any of the pain that comes with losing a child, but the Lord has continued to heal me more and more over the last four and a half years and I will say, ever since the first day, I have had hope. I have believed that God can heal, that God can redeem my heart and my life. You know, the thing that would always give me hope was remembering the cross. Because if you look at the cross through a human lens, a man is unjustly executed. His movement ends in failure, it seems. And yet, the cross is the vehicle and the instrument through which God is redeeming the whole world. When I had to go to the hospital to see him for the last time, it was absolutely as awful as you can imagine. But at the same time, even from the first moment, I still had this sense of hope. I had this sense that this was the worst thing ever, but that the Lord was with me. And so I said to the nurses and the doctors, I said, listen, you need to look at me, you need to listen to this. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And that means that I have hope. Jesus rising from the dead means that all this Christian stuff, all these promises that God loves you, that God is real, that God has a purpose in everything, it's all true if Jesus rose from the dead, and he did.